Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and this is five knives that I just don't think are getting enough attention. I think they uh, are really good knives, and I just don't think I see them around enough. I don't see enough people talk about them. And this is an honorable mention. This is the Kaiser Dialorme. It is a Justin Lundquist design. I, I know concept put out another Justin Lundquist design that's not exactly like this but it is really good quality and that one seemed to have gotten a little bit more attention however this one's in 20 cv g10 it comes in a couple different options but 20 cv nice affordable price beautiful sheep's foot uh you can call it a worn cliff because it is a straight edge but awesome utility style blade ergos are really nice it's just a straightforward handle the handle kind of looks kind of like a coffin but the blade hides really nicely in the, the handle so it's super compact the titanium milled pocket clip it does work very well and you can top flip it or front flip it like that and it's super snappy and because of the positioning of the flipper tab which i actually really like you can also just flip it like a regular knife um, the first time I did this, it did kind of feel weird and it took a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to doing that, it's so easy and satisfying at the same time. You can hold it like a regular knife and just lay your finger across the top and kind of just yank straight back, or you kind of get this little grip like this and just pull down, but super, super smooth lock bar access is amazing and it is completely false shut action for a super light blade like it just it's so smooth and just such a compact knife i'm just surprised i don't see more people screaming about this knife next or actually the number five because we're going down to number one and the first one is a budget knife now this is a very budget knife this thing's only like 25 dollars and this is the rake d191 I know why it's not getting a lot of love, and it's because it's an 8CR. However, for a knife, for knife standards, this thing is very slicey, nice and thin behind the edge, very thin blade stock, especially for the size of the blade. This thing is extremely slicey, very slim in the handle. I mean, it's a big knife but it is very compact for how big it is you know it's just super slim that's the first thing you notice getting it in hand how slim it is now it runs on needle bearings so it's extremely smooth now it took i don't know a couple days but a couple days of flipping this thing just got stupid smooth and because it's not on ball bearings because it's on needle bearings you don't feel them rolling it's very very smooth and for a 25 dollar knife to have needle bearings that's incredible yes it's a steel frame lock good access to the lock bar and it is like i said very very smooth the detent extremely well tuned um like i said this is a large knife so it has, uh, not, I wouldn't call it a strong detent. It's just a perfectly well-tuned detent for this size blade. Super snappy, beautiful blade shape, amazing ergos. You don't feel the clip at all because it's not, well, it's not a deep carry clip, but the clip works very well. It's, um, you know, super discreet and you don't, you don't feel it whatsoever, but I'm just surprised. I don't see more people because I think if more people tried this knife out, you'd be amazed at just how good of a knife it is, you know, take away the steel, take away some of the, you know, the, it only being a $25 knife, but just as an actual cutting object, this thing is awesome. Next. Now this is kind of a. Well, at least new to me, company. This is the Shielden, which I do have some more Shielden knives coming. The Shielden Tranchoidon. Now, this is a 9CR Damascus. It is a stainless Damascus, and it is a really nice looking Damascus. And you can see the, the 9CR coming out down here at the bottom. Now, the ergos on this knife is amazing. It feels so comfortable in the hand, kind of similar to 
you know, like a shaman or a Benchmade Griptilian or something like that. Now, I do feel this little clip just a tiny bit. I think he's planning on doing deep carry clips after this. However, I don't know if a deep carry clip would even, you know, it probably wouldn't even be as comfortable because this low profile clip, you know, even though I do feel this little corner right there, it's very nice in the hand, very, um, it's it fills your hand really really nicely because it is a beefy knife it is definitely a harder use beefier knife big flipper tab however the detent is so well tuned this has a good access to the lock bar nice strong tension on the lock bar too very smooth on the drop you can reverse flick the fuller the fuller is a little slick however i don't have an issue flicking it at all and the blade shape is very utilitarian while also being good for slicing and push cuts because it has a nice broad blade. The blade is very tall. The grind is very nice. It gets down to a nice thin edge and it slices really, really good. You know, the lockup on this thing is incredibly strong. I mean, this thing, you can feel how solid this knife is when you get it in hand. I was kind of wondering after getting it in hand and using it and flipping it and everything, how well it was going to hold up. And I am so surprised at how well this thing holds up. The liners are nice and thick. It is a robust knife for sure. But even though it has such a robust build, man, that detent is so well tuned. On. I know people would look at that flipper tab and say, man, that's a big flipper tab. Of course, it flips good, but the detent is really nice and it sounds really good. But it is robust all around, so but but it slices really good. So you have a good cutter, and it's a nice tough knife for sure. Next, now this one, it kind of upsets me how um, eh, number one is my most upsetting one, but this one is the Civivi Picaro. I don't know why people aren't screaming from the rooftops about this knife. I know I do. Um, and I have from the beginning because one amazing reverse flicking action. Number two, you don't have to worry about because a lot of holes that are really good for reverse flicking, they're not good at thumb flicking, but this one, you have a thumb stud. So you have the thumb stud or the hole deployment. They both work equally as good and it's out of the cutting path for the most part. Now, the beauty of this knife is its geometry. This thing is 15 thousandths behind the edge, nice thin blade stock, and it's a deep hollow grind. So it is a cutting beast. This thing cuts so, so good. It's the type of knife that when I, I think about like cutting a lot of stuff for long periods of time, get my Picaro. Because not only is it very comfortable, it's a large knife. It's about nine inches in total, which I know that keeps it out of a lot of people's pockets. But we have a reversible deep carry clip. So it's going to be good for righties and lefties. And it's very easy to reverse flick left-handed because it is a liner lock. Liner access is really good. Beautiful sharpening choil slash finger choil. You can get up nice and close to the blade. Beautiful blade shape for utility cuts, slicing, or push cuts. And the leverage you get in the cut, this handle is super comfortable. I mean, it's a super neutral grip. So even if you're cutting straps and things like that, it's just a solid, solid knife. Now, I think the one reason why it stays out of people's pockets is it's on Foster Brown's washers. However, mine... Because I've had it for a while, you can see how smooth it's got. No, it's not like false shut action like a lot of the knives on bearings are. And they do have a couple other options in this size that are on bearings. So I get that. But to me, this is the best looking one. Probably the best geometry one. T8 construction. Built very tough. Solid, solid work knife. Now, this is going to be... Like when I go like this, I can flex the blade because it is thin, but man, that just makes that geometry cut really good. And the D2 steel takes, I, Civivi does a really good job with their D2. I don't care what anybody says. Great job with their D2. Now, two more left, two more left. Now, this next one is a concept and it drives me nuts 
that this thing does not get so much attention, as much attention as I think it should. This is the Concept Convict, a sheepdog design. And in the hand, I know you can't see what I feel, but you can't. You see how this kind of flattens out right there, and then it kind of raises up, and then you have this section right here. That feels so cool. Just watch my hands go around it. It perfectly fits in your hand. You have um, a titanium spring clip that works great, but in the hand, I don't really feel this at all, but because of the way it lays nice and flat, and then when you put it in the pocket, it kind of lifts up, it is nice in the hand. I, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Then you have a beautiful working blade great for utility cuts and the type of knife this is it goes good in so many grips you can go from push cuts to flipping it around and cutting a box open from the side from the top you know it just it's very um you can manipulate it really good in the hand and it's just so comfortable you know even the pinch grips are really nice you know it's just it's it's very easy to just manipulate and i love that now the action has this thumb disc or whatever you want to call this it is not reversible and i think that's why people got upset i think people wanted this to be able to flip over to this side so that they could reverse flick it can't do that it does not because when you take this off there is a cut out there however it works great for the thumb flick i go right from the bottom and you can see it kind of has like a stair step effect you can kind of go right from the bottom Ooh. Now, I'm, now I fumbled it after talking so good about it. It works great, though. It does. Lock bar access is really nice and soft in the hand. It doesn't have like a cutout this way, but it has chamfers on the inside, so it's super easy to unlock. Very smooth on the drop, and you can reverse flick it. I personally don't have an issue reverse flicking it. It does have a stone wash, so, you know, even though it is very smooth, you have the stone wash to kind of kick off of i just use the side of my finger it seems very easy to me i use the lower part of the blade and because it's such a broad blade you it has a lot of weight towards the front so to me it's super easy i do this all the time that's how i always open it but the thumb flick is also really good um yeah, the geometry is so good. It cuts really good. This thing does not get in the cutting path. I know a lot of people look at it and say, how does it not get in the cutting path? But when you're cutting, it seems that materials just go right past it like this. I've never had anything hit this when I'm cutting. S35 VN blade steel, and it does come in a few different options. I'm just surprised I don't see more of these. Lots of standoffs. Some people would say that's overkill. But to me, man, it's just like, man, it's a nice, strong build. It looks really tough. The lockup, super solid. I mean, very, very solid lockup. Ceramic caged bearings. It does wind up getting false shut action after, you know, a few days of handling it. Awesome, awesome knife. Now, last but not least, and my most frustrating knife that I just, I don't understand because this knife is so awesome. The Tucson TS-267. This knife, I I'm surprised that people are not just, just everybody having one of these. I understand it has this cutout right here, and I don't like that either. However, it'd be very easy to get somebody in the community to start making scales for these. All it is is a square, a square with two screw holes. I'm definitely going to try to find somebody or make my own, but even left-handed, super easy. This is probably one of the best left-handed knives there is from Tucson. I mean, the detent on these and the way the hole position is, the reverse flick is so good. So, so good. Then you have this top flipper that has the jimping that wraps all the way around, exact kind of jimping you want in a front flipper. Works so good, so easy to front flip. I mean, it's just, it's a, a fidgeting beast. Then we get to this clip point blade, which I think is another thing that keeps it out of people's pop pockets. A lot of people don't like clip points. However, this is not the kind of clip point that, that people don't like. 
This is the kind of clip point people should like because it's very similar to a drop point. The, the tip drops downward. It doesn't clip back up. There's no rise to it. I know this cutout right here makes it look like there's rise to it. And if there is, it's a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, it's mostly straight right here. Maybe it has a tiny, tiny bit of curve right here at the tip. But look at this. So easy to get to the tip. I'm not raising up at all. I mean, it's crazy to me. Most, a lot of drop points, you have a more difficult time getting to the tip. You have to go all the way up here. This one, super easy. So the tip drops down exactly where you want it for utility cut. Then the ergos are great, fantastic. It's super soft in this area. Right here, it's really comfortable all around here. You can get up nice and close to the blade. You can get up um, <clears throat> a really close grip to the blade or stay away from it. Very comfortable in the hand. You get a full four finger grip, even back here. So then, you know, before you even get to the choil area, the geometry isn't super thin or anything like that, but it's also not robust. This one's in 14C28N. I'll, I'll link it below because I can definitely link these below. You can get them for a hell of a deal. The, the clip, one of Tucson's best clips. This clip works so good. It's so good. Beautiful stonewashed titanium, beautiful satin finish, and this isn't like a horrible satin finish from Tucson. It actually is a really nice satin finish. You can see it is very, very nice. A lot of Tucson satin finishes get really, really fingerprinty. This one's not as bad as most of them. And access to the lock bar is really good. Stupid, stupid smooth. And it didn't take long to get this smooth. Like, I mean, it was out of the box. It wasn't quite this smooth, but dang it, it didn't take long at all. And it is complete false shut action now. Nice and centered still. The build quality has been phenomenal. Um, I love it. I love it. And it seems like the longer you have something like this, the more you like it because you just appreciate um how the build quality you appreciate how hold, well it holds up you appreciate the reverse flick man i mean this reverse flick is so good on this but it does remind me of another knife out there that did get a lot of shine and this being as, so, as similar as it is to that knife it just surprises me that this one didn't uh, get as much feedback as the other one but there you guys go. Let me know down in the comments what your guys what the knife you guys feel should get more light I love you guys. Peace.